Okay, Genesis chapter 26. Let's, we're going to give you an opportunity to sow seed this evening. We're going to receive our evening offering. <clears throat> there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Bimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. You know, it's interesting. Here's Isaac, and there's a famine in the land, just like in the days of Abraham, his father. So, you know, famines will always come, right? Circumstances always come. Situations always come. And um, it's very interesting, you know, and, and these cycles of economic downturns and problems always come. Amen. So you can't avoid what happens in the world. The world is, is always in cycles. But there's one thing that you can always count on. See, if, you, if you're counting on the world, if you're leaning on the world, if you're attached to the world, you're always going to have problems because there's always going to be famines. There was always going to be. Now they're talking about another wave of COVID. I rebuke that foul, demonic thing from the pit of hell. And new, they're already preparing. Actually, they're already trying to prepare. They're already, there's all this stuff been, that's been leaked from the FAA that they're going to try to bring masks back on airports and airplanes, all that stuff by October. You know, it's just garbage. It's all garbage. Amen. It's all garbage. Amen. It's all garbage. It's all just more control, more demonic antichrist agendas, more fear mongering. Amen. And so, you know, these things will come and go. These things will come and go. But there's one constant we can always count on. Amen. And here's what happened. So Isaac goes to Abimelech, which is the king. A lot of people, they just try to run to the world. They're trying to run to some kind of natural situation. They're trying to run to, basically, going to Abimelech is just going to the world. So when troubles come, don't go to the world. Don't run to the world. Because look at what happens. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. So you, you're going to run to Abimelech. Most people are going to run to Egypt. They're going to run to some other natural thing where they're going to be looking for safety. Security. Amen. But look at what the Lord says. Dwell in the land. Which land? The land of famine. Dwell in the land. The land of famine. I will be with you. And I will bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and to your descendants, I give all these lands. So basically, this is the land covenant, first and foremost. And secondly, this is also the power of where you put your foot down, right? Wherever you, your feet tread upon, I shall give it to you. It's, the, it's dominion because see, the blessing comes dominion. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion over the earth realm. See, when you're walking in the power of the blessing, you're going to have dominion over the realm of the earth. You're going to have dominion over natural circumstances. If you get in your head, if you start to try to Think about what's going to happen, trying to analyze the situation and the circumstance. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to run to the world and you're going to get into fear and you're not going to be walking in the power of the blessing. But the Lord says, I will be with you. I will bless you. Dwell in the land that I have sworn to give to you. This land is yours. Because remember, when God came and made a covenant with Abraham, he also promised him land. That he said, you will possess this land. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will possess the land that the Lord is giving me. It's a part of the Abrahamic covenant. It's a part of our blessing. Hallelujah. I'll give you all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father, because God made a covenant. God made a promise and he does not back down from his promises. Amen. His promises are yes and amen. So his his word is, his word, his word does not change. I am the Lord, I change not. 
Amen. I am the Lord. I change not. Hallelujah. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of the heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. What is Gerar? The land of famine. See, he was in the midst of famine. That was the natural circumstances. Amen. So whatever circumstances are surrounding you, that is the natural. But you have to take your eyes off of the natural. You have to put your eyes on your covenant. You have to put your eyes on the Lord. You have to put your eyes not on the problem, but on the promise. You have to remember his promises. Forget not all of his benefits. It's amazing how Christians so quickly tend to forget. As soon as some trouble comes, immediately they forget all the benefits of the Lord. Forget not his benefits. Remember this. The Bible keeps saying, remember, rejoice. I say again, rejoice. Hallelujah. So there are certain things that keep repeated because we have to understand. We have to remember God's word. You have to take your eyes off of circumstances and you have to put your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Dwell in this land and... And I will be with you. I will bless you. Hallelujah. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. He was going to run to Egypt. He thought, hey, maybe the grass is greener on the other side. Amen. But the Lord says, stay in the midst of famine. And I will prove myself to you. I will show myself strong on your behalf. Hallelujah. So I want you to now go down to verse 12. Go down to verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in the land. Which land? Well, which land? The land of what? The land of famine. Isaac sowed in the land of famine. Why the famines come? No water, no rain. The earth is dry and hard. The last thing you do in the land of famine in the natural is sow. The ground is not ready for seed. In the natural, the last thing you do in the land of famine is sow seed. If you actually go out sowing seed in the land of famine, people will mock you. They will laugh at you. They will think you're crazy. Because of the sun, I guess, you know, he's lost his head. You know, what's going on with this guy? He's gone loony, looney tunes, loco, crazy loco, daily. Everyone say Delhi. That's Turkish for crazy loco. Delhi, Delhi. Not the sandwich Delhi, the crazy Delhi. Spelled the same way, D-E-L-I. So everyone say Delhi. Isaac was Delhi. Loco. People, I'm sure they mocked him. They thought he lost his mind. You crazy? What are you doing? This is the, this is the, this is out of season. This is. This is absolutely contrary to the circumstances. You do not sow seed in the land of famine. Amen. But Isaac goes, and listen now, this is interesting. I mean, obviously, the Lord didn't tell him to go sow seed. But he said, I'll be with you and I'll bless you in the land of famine. Well, the blessing means to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and to have dominion. So he's expecting to be fruitful. Well, he's expecting a harvest. He's expecting fruit. Well, to have fruit, you have to have seed in the ground. So he goes out sowing seed in the ground that is absolutely contrary. You shouldn't be doing that. Amen. So Isaac sowed seed in that land. Which land? The land of what? The land of famine. And the land of famine turned into a land of delight. Come on. Come on. Come on. Isn't that what the Lord says? I'll bless you. In Malachi 3, I'll bless you. I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Your vine will not cast its fruit before its time. You shall be a land of delight. All the peoples around you will call you blessed. People will even call you blessed. I mean, it is so... God wants to, sh- 
to prove himself in your life. He wants people to look at your life and go, man, that guy's blessed. How in the world is he blessed in the, middle, in the midst of famine? How in the world is he blessed? How in the world is she blessed? How is that happening? It's supernatural. That's how it's happening because the Lord is with you. And the Lord said, I will bless you. I will be with you and I will bless you. Hallelujah. Isaac sowed seed in that land. Which land? Thank you, the land of famine. And reaped in the same year a hundredfold. One hundredfold. One hundred times in the same year. Probably in about six months because that's seed time and harvest time. One hundredfold in the midst of famine. Amen. This is, this is, this is now crazy. Now he's getting crazy blessed. You call me crazy? Yeah, I'm crazy blessed. You call me loco? I'm loco blessed. Hallelujah. You call me daily? I'm daily blessed. Crazy blessed. Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed him. When the Lord blesses you, doesn't matter what the circumstances are, doesn't matter what people say. Hallelujah. So stop making your plans to run to Abimelech. Stop making plans to run to, to uh, Egypt. Just run to the Lord. Grab a hold of his promises. Understand that the Lord is with you. He said, I will never leave you, never forsake you. Hallelujah. That you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. But remember, they are spiritual blessings. You don't see spiritual blessings, but those spiritual blessings will manifest and turn into earthly blessings, financial blessings, things that can be seen because the world needs to see it to call you blessed because they don't see anything spiritual. They're blind, but you see it. You see it because you look with the eye of faith and you can grab a hold of the things of God by the eye of faith because you see it in your spirit and you take it. Hallelujah. And you say, it's mine. You believe it. You stand on it. When you've done all you need to do, you keep standing and you keep speaking and you will see it come to pass. It will manifest in your life. And when the manifestation happens in the natural, then people that have natural eyes will see it and go, and they call you blessed. They'll call you blessed. So imagine Isaac's land. It was a land of famine until he sowed and that land of famine, when he sowed, turned into a land of delight. Hallelujah. What was the verse we looked at last night? If you are what? Willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. All he had to do was obey God's word. All he had to do was, he had to be willing. He had to do something. He couldn't just sit under the tree and wait for something to happen. He had to actually go do something. He had to act in faith and, and do something that was ridiculous in the natural. Hallelujah. And the Lord showed up. And he said, oh, shakarabanda. He spent his days in prosperity and his years in pleasantness and joy. Hallelujah. How many of you want to spend your days in prosperity? Your years in pleasantness and joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm about to say something that's going to offend some people, possibly. I'm just going to give you a little disclaimer. If this word offends you, then you have to go talk to God. Don't get offended with me because I'm about to read Scripture. I'm about to read Scripture. The man began, began to prosper. The man began to prosper. <laughs> He just began to prosper. Hallelujah. The man began to prosper and continued to prosper. Amen. The man began to prosper and continued to prosper. Until he became very, very prosperous. But brother, you know, that's just spiritual prosperity. 
That's just spiritual prosperity. You know, brother, hallelujah, praise God. That's just talking about spiritual prosperity. Really? For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds. Are they like spiritual flocks and spiritual herds? <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. Because <laughs> I've heard it all. I have heard it all. That's just spiritual prosperity. Um, let me hear you speak in tongues. Oh, I don't believe in that. You ain't, you're spiritually broke. You're spiritually broke. Because spiritual prosperity is having supernatural language. Language of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. When you fill with the Holy Ghost, you are now spiritually prosperous. You have received a deposit from heaven. The power from on high has come upon you. You have been endued, clothed with power from on high. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might. Without power, you're powerless. That sounds like poverty. You're inefficient, deficient. That sounds like poverty. You're weak. That sounds like poverty. But when you are empowered, whoo, you're, you are spiritually prosperous. You are. Doesn't the Bible say it is he who gives you power to create wealth? So the man began to prosper and he continued to prosper until he became very, very prosperous. Very prosperous. So do you believe in prosperity? We believe in very prosperity. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, and a great number of servants. Guess what happened? Everybody's working for him now because he's got the business that's prospering. He's got the only open business <laughs> that's profitable. He's got the only open business that's profitable. Everybody's out of, out of work, but now they're working for him. Even Abimelech's people now working for him. No, seriously, Abimelech's people are working for him. Remember, he was going to go to Abimelech because he was the greatest in the land. Now Abimelech's people are working for him. And the Philistines envied him. <laughs> And then look at 16, and Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. The man that was mighty is no longer the mighty. Oh, how things have turned around, huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know you have really broken through when people say, can you please just go away? You're taking everything, man. You leave some for us. Bro, you've taken all my servants, my flocks, and my herds. Where do you think those herds and flocks and servants came from? They came from Abimelech. Because <laughs> guess what? Isaac had the food. They had the flocks and the herds and the servants. People need to eat. Animals need to eat. Isaac got the food. So think about this, a hundredfold was the beginning of him prospering. So can we say that he went beyond a hundredfold? Possibly up to a, hundred, a thousandfold? Huh? Because didn't, didn't the Lord say to Israel, I will multiply you a thousandfold? I'll bless you and multiply you a thousandfold? So there's even a thousandfold. Uh, did you know about the thousandfold? You didn't know about the thousandfold? Who knew about the thousandfold? Huh? Who knew about the thousandfold? Yes, no? Oh, yes, there's a thousandfold. When they were going into the promised land, the Lord told them, I'll multiply you a thousandfold. So, hundredfold is just the beginning. And then there's a thousandfold. There's a thousandfold. 
But how do, how do you get there? You've got to have faith. You've got to believe God. You've got to take a hold of your covenant. Can you say amen? amen. You've got to sow seed. You've got to believe God. Amen. And you're going to have to become industrious. You're going to have to put your hand to something. Put your hand to the plow. Put your hand to something. He'll bless the work of your hands, not the seat of your pants. <laughs> your hands are blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever you put your hands to shall prosper. Hallelujah. Whatever you put your hands to shall be blessed. The seed you put in the ground, especially in the time of famine, is what brings the greatest breakthrough. So no matter what you're going through, a seed will meet the need. A seed will meet the need. So you, you, you can't be need-based. You can't be need-conscious. You have to be seed-conscious. You have to think seed, not need. If you think need, guess what happens? You look at what's lacking. You'll have a mentality of poverty and lack. But if you look at seed, you know that seed is going to multiply. That seed is going to increase. That seed is going to come back to you, pressed down, shaking together, running over. A hundredfold is going to come back to you. And you'll begin to prosper and you'll continue to prosper until you become very prosperous. So start on this journey. Hallelujah. Break the back of lack. Amen. 